So I got about halfway through digitizing this design in Hatch Embroidery software and I had to stop and go about it a different way because it just was not working. So I brought this design into Canva and I used the Pro Feature Background Remover to delete the background from being white and I was able to change the color to orange. With the background orange, the software has a easier time being able to depict where the background starts and the design begins. So once I bring this design into the software, the software will be able to digitize the white and the pink and not confuse the background for the duck design. So I just press download and make sure it's in PNG format and save it to my computer and I bring that design into Hatch. So after I save the design from Canva, I bring that design into Hatch Embroidery software and I just drag it in from the folder straight into the software. And I go over to the left hand side where the auto digitize selections are and use click to fill for this design. The most important part here is reducing the number count to as few as possible. So in this design, I only see orange, white, and pink, and black. So I make sure to set the number to four. And so essentially what I'm doing is clicking to fill the fills that I see. So right here, I just click to fill the white fill and I reduce the node count by using the smooth shape button. And now I can use the reshape button and delete some of the nodes and adjust some of the nodes accordingly and sort of overlap some of the fills to prevent gapping. So as you can see here, I'm just making sure that the white thread is overlapping the black thread so that if there's any pulling that occurs during the embroidery process, some of that pulling is compensated by the overlapping of the thread colors. And a large portion of digitizing is honestly just adjusting the node count, deleting some of the nodes that really just don't belong, and overlapping the thread on top of other threads to prevent gapping. And if there's ever any detailing that is just too small, I'll never hesitate to delete some of those detailings because I can always just go back in and add the black thread on top of the white thread. So as you can see here, I'm just deleting these small holes because if this was if this were to be embroidered, this would have probably the highest potential of gapping issues. So I just go ahead and delete it and I go back in afterwards and add the black thread on top. Whenever I'm faced with two thread colors shown, so right here you can see the pink and the white thread when it really just needs to be white thread right there, I switch up the method. So instead of using click to fill without holes, or I'm sorry, click to fill with holes, I use click to fill without holes and I click on the pink thread that is the outer thread. So whatever color thread is on the outer thread that you're digitizing, click the outer thread and it'll fill in the holes that is a different color and you can just change the color to whatever you want it to be. And this design, the eye was probably the hardest part because it took a lot of adjusting the nodes and moving them around, as you can see. <laughs> but it was worth it in the end because it came out pretty good. But just give yourself time, be patient, and adjust those nodes, and 
it'll slowly come together. You just gotta slowly place those nose where they belong. So because the detailing on the beak is so small, I also did the same method here with filling the entire fill and disregarding the black. So I clicked to fill without holes and I'm going to put that black detailing in at the end with the other feather detailing from before. And again, the reason why I'm clicking to fill disregarding the holes and putting in those detailings later is because I want to prevent gapping as much as possible. So adding that detailing back in later is just going to prevent gapping. That is the reason why I'm doing that. So now that I've finished the white fill, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the black thread, which is primarily just the outline.
As you can see, I'm just going back in and adding those detailings that I previously deleted. Before you can output your design, you have to adjust the sizing accordingly for your embroidery machine hoop. So this custom design file was actually for a customer with a five by seven hoop. So I'm just adjusting the height and the width accordingly for their hoop and exporting the file. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more. Comment down below what I should digitize next. I'll see you guys next time.